Welcome back, my friend. Today's story is one of the most famous Japanese urban legends, the legend of Hachishakusama, which means eight feet tall lady. If you heard of the slender man, you will have a very good idea of what Hachishakusama is like. She also abducts people, mostly children, aged between eight to ten years old. So this is the story. On a crisp autumn day, Yuki was playing peacefully in a quiet village deep in the heart of rural Japan, far from her usual bustling city life. Her parents always sent Yuki to her grandparents' village for summer holidays. The village was a wonderful, quiet place full of fresh air, crystal clear lakes and beautiful forests. Only one thing was spoiling the peaceful demeanor of the place. There lived an ancient legend that terrified the locals for generations. They spoke in hushed whispers of the Hashishakusama, a malevolent spirit who stood eight feet tall and preyed upon innocent children. Children were missing frequently from the village and its surrounds. They said that to catch her victims she stalked the children for some days or months then she took them away from their family and killed them. On the outskirts of the village lay an old shrine, said to be her dwelling, shrouded in mystery and fear. Yuki, a city girl through and through, had been captivated by the tales she'd heard from the villages. One gloomy autumn evening, as the crimson leaves fell from the trees and the moon cast eerie shadows on the ground. Yuki found herself playing near a forbidden shrine. She couldn't remember how she got there. The last thing she remembered, she was playing in her grandparents' garden, and now she was here, on the outskirts of the village, all alone in the twilight. She felt as if she was hypnotized. Then she heard a soft, distant whisper. It sounded like the wind, but it carried a haunting sound. The whisper grew louder and closer until it realized into her voice. And then it happened. The sound, the unmistakable, thumping noise that had been described in countless stories. A figure of the woman emerged from the shadows, towering above Yuki at eight feet tall. Her hair, long and tangled, cascaded like a waterfall of darkness, and her eyes gleamed with malevolence. The Shakusama had appeared. Terrified, Yuki bolted towards her grandparents' house. Bursting through the door, she found her grandparents sitting by the hearse seemingly uninterested in her stories. However, as she recounted her terrifying encounter, the expressions shifted from indifference to alarm when she mentioned the woman's height and the haunting noise. They wanted to know all of the details. How tall the woman was? What noise did she make? Did she see Yuki? And so on. Then, they explained that something terrible was happening around the village and children went missing all the time. That the children were abducted by Hachi Shakusama and it looks like she has now chose Yuki as her next victim. Her grandparents exchanged anxious glances and quickly ushered her into a small room at the back of the house. They drew a circle of salt around her and placed a bowl of salt in each corner of the room. They covered all the windows and waited for the darkness to descend. Their faces were etched with worry as they warned Yuki not to open the door for anyone, no matter what she heard or saw. Yuki was supposed to stay in this room until the morning sun has risen. If she survives the night, she can escape the next morning. 
The night seemed to stretch endlessly as Yuki sat in the room, trembling with fear. The sound of Hachishaku-sama's approach grew louder, the eerie sound causing her heart to race. Then it stopped abruptly. Yuki's heart pounded as she heard a voice outside the door, softly calling her name. It sounded exactly like her mother's voice. Yuki, open the door. But she remembered her grandparents' warning. Yuki's mother was in the city and there was no reason for her to be here. Then she looked at the bowls of salt in the corners of the room. All four of them turned black. Yuki clutched the edges of her dress and remained silent. The voice outside grew more insistent, pleading for Yuki to open the door. It mimicked her mother's words and tone perfectly, but Yuki's resolve was unshaken. Tears welled up in her eyes as she sat alone in the room, wishing for her mother to really be there. Hachishaku-sama continued to mimic her mother's voice for what felt like hours, pleading and cursing and asking her to open the door. But Yuki remained steadfast, determined to survive. Eventually, the false voice faded into silence and Yuki heard the eerie sound of Hachishaku-sama retreating. Oh. As dawn broke, Yuki cautiously emerged from the room, her grandparents embracing her with relief. Yuki's parents were on the way to the village and soon the family would reunite. They knew that Hachishaku-sama would forever be drawn to Yuki now that she had seen and heard her. In a somber decision, they resolved to leave the village and never to return again to protect their beloved Yuki from the malevolent spirit's grasp. Later that morning, Yuki and her parents left the village, leaving behind the dark legend of Hachishaku-sama. The eerie sound would forever haunt Yuki's nightmares, a reminder of the night she narrowly escaped the eight-foot-tall woman's deadly clutches. They moved far away to a place where the name Hachishaku-sama was never spoken. But the memory of the dreadful night will never fade into the past, as they knew that they can never return. Hachishaku-sama will be there waiting. Thank you for listening, and as usual, have a nice nightmare.